It's Vicki Crothers here, and um, thank you. I sort of threw it out there about um, getting personal about my story, um, and so many people emailed back and reached out saying, oh, we'd love to hear your story, your, you know, your who, what, where, when, why, um, ups and downs, and what you've learned over the years, and um, your journey, and where it all began, and so, you know, it's sort of weird to sort of sit here and tell you my story, thinking that, you know, what does it really matter? But someone said, you know, my story might inspire someone else and encourage someone else. So I hope that that's what this does. And it's, um, it's not a short story. It's a long story. So uh, delete if you don't want to listen to it. Um, it's all a true story, but um, it's long. So, um, I guess the best place to start is in the beginning. From a really young age, I think around four, my grandmother was an artist. And it was such a joy to me to see her studio. And I don't know about other artists out there, but I get so excited about brushes and paints and paper and sketchbooks. And I could spend hours in an art store. It's just like, I, I just can't get enough. But it was a wonderful time where she would give us at Christmas time these big bags from Simpsons full of fun stuff. And I think there's 12 cousins and we all got a bag and my bag had art supplies in it. As I remember, I got charcoal and watercolor and brushes and a sketch pad. And I remember sitting on the stairs in her house and she showing me how to draw a tree and spending time in her studio. And I kind of think it has to be where I, started loving it and um, loved being around her. And then in grade two, I did this painting. And funny, it kind of emulates what I do now. It's black outline. Like, you know, when you're back then as a kid, you did these black, you know, marker outlines and then you had to color the shapes in with different colors. And surprise, surprise, when I finished my piece, there was a bird in the middle of my painting. Like it was like magic and I think it's just where the shapes landed. So um, a bit of a mistake maybe. And um, the way I colored them in, the bird stood out. The principal loved it. He framed it and hung it in his office. True story. And I was looking for, I can't, I don't know where I put it and I wish I had kept it. I don't think back then it was that important to me. And um, now I would, I, I, I can envision it. I would love to have, to have it, but um, I probably threw it out. But anyways, that was an exciting time and my parents, I think, thought, oh my gosh, Vicky's talented, let's put her into art classes. And it's something that I love, like, you know, maybe some people like sports, I loved art. And if I could just take art in every class at school, I, I, I would have, if I could have. And I loved geography too, because I loved, I spent hours coloring in the maps, it was just, <laughs> the most fun thing. Um, so we moved to Quebec um, and I was enrolled in art classes um, um, with Renata Heidersdorf. And that was, I think, a very pinnacle time for me because she was an art teacher who really encouraged um, you to do your own thing. She gave you lots of different supplies and different mediums and you did what you want. There was no right or wrong. And then she celebrated us all at the end of the year with a big art show and our parents came. I remember it. I just loved it and I couldn't wait to go. I think I went two or three times a week after school and um, I loved it. And I think I've reached out to her to tell her thank you because it was a wonderful time. And I always tell people, people ask me, you know, I want to, my child wants to take art lessons. Where should I send them? And if I can say one thing, it's not where, it's who. Find out who the, the art teacher is. Are they fun? Do they let you, you know, find your own voice, explore things, um, but more um, letting you do your own thing and exploring things in your own way and being your own person and encouraging you to, to do it your own way. Um, I don't really believe there's a real right and a wrong um, all great or some great artists really push the the element and um, change the way art um, 
the direction that our the world of art has gone so um, I think that's very important but she was very inspirational and so art is what I wanted to do art is what I was passionate about um, there was a time in Montreal my mom was very sick she died of cancer when I was 14 and it was a tough time for me but I remember um, decorating her hospital walls with all my art my drawings, my paintings, everything. I remember it like yesterday. And it brought such joy to her and she was so happy and the people in the hospital, I remember it. It was just like, you walked into a room and it was like a gallery, explosion of color. And um, I think it made her feel really good. And both my parents thought, you know, art is what I should do and really encouraged me. And when it came time to go to university, Dad wanted me to go to OCAT, Ontario College of Art, stay at home, go to school in Toronto, but I wanted to go to Queen's. Queen's, to me, was the best thing in the world. It was a wonderful, it is a wonderful art program. I think they only took 40 of us, so it was difficult to get in because you had to go down there and you had to uh, present a portfolio that you worked really hard at for probably three years of high school. You had to have an interview, you had to paint and draw from a still life. It was, a, it was a big deal um, back then. I don't know if they still do it. And it was a, you would work in this, I think it was called Ontario Hall, and you had your own studio, you had your own key to the building. So it was 24 hour um, opportunity to be in a studio. And um, it was a fine art degree. So, you know, you're just learning the basics in sculpture, printmaking, drawing, painting. Um, I think that's basically it. So it was very fine art not specialized, so lots of opportunity to explore and find your own voice. And I didn't get in right away. <laughs> I didn't get in and I was decide I decided to go to another university and I think in June of that year, 79, <laughs> I got a letter and I was accepted. So I was thrilled. So I took a quick left turn and went to Queens and had four incredible years. But interesting, um, color was not really in my forte. I was, I really struggled with color. I had a difficult time with it. And I loved printmaking. And I um, majored in lithography, which is a form of printmaking. And I found it so exciting because it was a, such a surprise when you ran your art through the press. You didn't know exactly what you were going to get at the end. And sometimes there were fabulous mistakes that would happen. And I had someone reach out and say, what was your art like back then? Has your art always been the same? So at Queens, it was mostly fairly black and white. I didn't do a lot of color. And if I used color, I used a fair amount of purple. And purple meant depression. And my prof says, Vicki, are you depressed? You use so much purple. And I can't think that I was depressed, but I love purple. And I'll show you a, a print that I did at Queens. And you know, my trees are actually quite similar that I do today. And I love these little house, house, simple childlike house um, images. And I did them in a lot of art from a young girl, like through school, uh, all through university. And I've actually um, used them in art that I do today. And I think it's that childlike image that you learn to draw when you're a little kid um, in school. And um, as Picasso said, all children are artists. It's remaining one. As you grow up. I really think I'm one of those adults that has remained an artist as they've grown up because of all the great inspiration around me and encouragement and positive feedback. So one of my lithographs, I can show it to you because it's really different than what I, I do now. And I have all my art from university or a lot of it. So there it is. If you can see it, the crazy house, or two houses, and the tree. So that's a lithograph done on Bavarian limestone. And today I have continued that little house imagery in some of my paintings. And uh, very magical kind of childlike imagery. So Queens was a great time in my life uh, and then when I graduated and met my now wonderful husband Keith we went to Europe for almost six months and 
I dragged him to every gallery that I, I could go to. Um, and I wanted to see the art up close and personal. It's really different when you learn about it through a book or slides on a projector to actually standing in front of it. And I, I'm i just in awe when I look at art, when I look at anybody's art. And I think it's important for all of us to take the time to look and enjoy art. But, you know, Picasso is one of my favorites. And Matisse, the color of Matisse. And Chagall, I love Chagall. And uh, I could just go on and on, just the Impressionist period. Um, so I got to see it all up close and it was um, remarkable for me, it, very exciting. And when I came back, I had to get a job. <laughs> and I think being an artist back then um, just wasn't going to work for me. I, I had to make some money. And so I got a job, a great job at Simpsons, which is now the Bay at um, Queen and Young downtown. But I got a job designing the Simpsons windows, which was absolutely magical for me because each window was like a canvas. Um, the seventh floor at that time was a studio. So as the window de designers, we would spend hours up on the seventh floor designing, painting our backdrops, uh, building our props, like that mechanical corner window took us three weeks to create and install. And it was magic when we opened the drapes and everyone came from all over during the Santa Claus parade to see it. And every window, like whether you did pots and pans or mannequins or suitcases or whatever it was, it was just, it was just an exciting opportunity to learn design, shape, color. And your window had to be impeccably clean and organized. They would check on it when you, after you installed it. There wasn't a thread hanging, there wasn't a piece of dirt on the floor. So, you know, I really learned to be organized, um, controlled kind of graphic kind of style to keep everything in its proper place. And after that opportunity, I had a cool opportunity where I worked with Jim Henson and he had a retail um, line of stores in Toronto called Muppet Stuff. Actually, they were all over Canada. And I got the job to do the design and display of the merchandise inside the store. So what better thing could a job be where I got to play with Kermit the Frog, Ernie and Bert, um, Cookie Monster, Big Bird, uh, uh, you name it, and create displays and window designs. And uh, it was so much fun and I loved it. And it was all about color. Um, so, you know, sometimes when I think about where I am today, I think my career today is um, an accumulation of all my life experiences. Like. I don't think I could actually be here today if I didn't have all these past opportunities to learn and um, be inspired by so many different forms of art. And when I had my three beautiful daughters living in Aurora, of course, I wanted to help out in the schools and in in basically the art area. And they got a hold of the fact that I was an artist or had an art degree and would I come in and help out in the art class and then uh, at Devon's Drive one of the teachers had a great idea to do uh, a celebration of the arts where they hired me to come in and teach every single class a different art project and we had a huge uh, festival of the arts at the end of the year where every child was celebrated. It was unbelievably magical and I think through my teaching of encouraging them to believe in themselves, um, do their own thing, if they copied their neighbor it wasn't right, like theirs had to be individually theirs and to be proud of it and I told them to eliminate detail, I told them to see the world in shapes and I only gave them bold colors to use um, and they had such great success. I have portfolios of all the children's work from kindergarten up to grade eight. I worked in many schools and I also worked at a, an amazing girls camp north of Kingston. Thank you, Lisa Wilson, um, um, Camp Oconto. And I taught for 16 years, um, encouraged young girls to believe in themselves and have fun. And we we draw and paint and hang out and just have a wonderful time. And I think those were great years for me. And 
looking back, I think seeing the beautiful pieces that the children did really inspired me as an artist. And I um, taught them a lot about landscape and having a cottage up in Georgian Bay and loving the landscape of uh, Georgian Bay, any Ontario Canadian landscape. Um, I, when I got back into doing my own work, I sort of mimicked what the kids were doing. So I would see the world in shapes. I eliminated detail. I used my imagination and used all sorts of different colors. And then at one time, I was at McMichael and I didn't know Norval Morisot's work and uh, I was there by myself and I went to a, a show of his work and I stood in a room, I believe I was by myself, and I think it was just like unbelievably moving for me to see his colors and the intensity of how they, um, the contrast of the colors and how the energy in his work just like moved me to no end. The reds in my painting, I directly borrowed from him. Um, that's why I started doing red skies. I said, if he can have red skies, I can have red skies. So I share a lot of love for his work. And um, I had a lucky little break when I stopped teaching and decided it was my turn, probably about 15 years ago. My dad had passed away and I kind of said, you know, this is my time. I don't want to be 80 and wished I had. I had wanted to be an artist, practicing artist my whole life. And I had all these cool different opportunities, but I felt it's time, it's time for me to do my thing. And whatever that thing is, I, I just wanted to try to do something and had little tiny shows here and there. And um, I had this sort of big break where Al Pace, he's a Canadian um, potter, he has a beautiful gallery up in Orangeville and he invited me for one of his Christmas shows to be the artist that filled the walls that his pottery was all in the middle on risers and he needed an artist to fill up all his wall space and so I met him we decided we needed about 36 paintings I went oh my gosh how am I gonna get 36 paintings done but I really focused and I thought it gave me an opportunity to paint and um, it was a one weekend show and all of them sold. <laughs> True story, 36 paintings or more. And thank you to my family and my friends and people I'd never met that bought one. And it wasn't really about the sale of the pieces. It was about people just love them. And um, it just, uh, you know, blew me away. I'm very humbled about how much joy it brought to people and how they loved the colors and they were just so excited about them and I got into not long after that I got into the one-of-a-kind Christmas show and totally excited about that I had my little booth you know I had um, tons of work I worked very hard for the show it's 11 days and I sold 46 paintings and I sold 46 paintings to most people I didn't know and that kind of like uh, set me on fire in a sense of, you know, I met a lot of people. When I sell a piece of work, um, they get me for life uh, as a friend because I love to know where they are. I love to, you know, the, each art, each painting is like a child to me and they're really important to me and I just love to know that they're in a happy place and, and it makes me happy. And, um, and over the last 10 years, it's been, magical where um, I basically have uh, so much demand for commissioned pieces. I can't keep up. I'm grateful. It gives me a great opportunity. Thank you everyone to paint um, pieces that I might not um, otherwise paint. They give me a photograph of something that they love and they get to choose the sky color and then it's up to me. And no piece is, there's no commitment to any painting. If they don't love it, they can't have it. I want, I don't want anyone hanging a Vicky in their house that they don't love very much. So if they don't want it, no problem. I'll keep it. And um, sometimes they're hard to give away and each one is um, unique and uh, in itself. And that has driven my business to go into uh, the opportunity of prints. I just redid my website last year. I've gone, um, I've 
in, introduced e-commerce and I offer, right now I think there's about 18 paintings that I offer online in print. And that's been wonderful because it's given the opportunity for so many people to have a Vicky that couldn't have an original. And um, I still work through my originals. Um, and thank you for being so patient, all of you who wait for them. Um, so I appreciate that. And um, so today I'm, I have two studios, one at my cottage in Georgian Bay that Keith built for me two years ago. It's spectacular. So I can paint at the cottage where I'm inspired. I get out on my kayak, I do sketching and come back to the studio. And with my now four grandkids, they love to go to Gamma Studio and they paint with me. It is, it's marvelous. And I have a great studio here in Aurora. And someday when COVID's over, I love visitors. I love people to come and sit with me and chat and have a coffee, have wine and and um, and visit and I do a couple of workshops every year which are just fun it gives opportunity for people to come and explore that creative side that I think a lot of people are just dying to uh, revisit or try or explore and it's just about having fun and it's amazing what uh, people have done in these workshops it's just unbelievable the art and I've inspired a lot of schools in teaching kids art. Um, a, a wonderful teacher in Nova Scotia that uses my imagery and sends videos from the classroom of all the kids saying, thank you, Vicki. So, you know, um, my work, my life is my work. And um, I can't say that I'd be here today if it wasn't for all the amazing opportunities I've had. It's uh, when people say, you know, how, how do you do what you do? I do it because it's just, a whole accumulation of all my experiences and uh, and and through teaching and learning and and exploring and um, I totally totally hope I inspire someone because you know someone said that's one reason to share your story because maybe you'll inspire someone else and uh, I love to inspire and share and support everybody who's trying to get into the arts or who just loves the arts and um, someone asked me recently you know, uh, what do you see down the road? What do you see your future? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And, you know, I just, I just love painting. I just feel like, you know, I'm getting older and I've got so many paintings to paint and I feel just not enough time. I just, uh, I finish one and before I finish one, I want to do the other one and I see this and I do that and I have a commission. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I, I want to do a outside mural, which might be happening. I am dying to do a children's book with those crazy little houses and birds and little kids. And, um, you know, that will happen. Um, I've got to focus on that. But I, uh, I hope that I inspire my grandkids to do anything they want to do and believe in themselves and see that their crazy grandma, you know, has, has created um, beautiful art and for the, all the world to enjoy and I sold one yesterday it's a, a neat story a, a family going through a difficult time and they I didn't think I'd sell this piece I love this piece it's got a green sky and I've only done maybe three with a green sky and um, it just made them so happy and it's so joyful and bright and cheery and I thought wow if that's if that's the legacy I can leave in this world that it's a happier place and it makes someone's day uh, special or happy or joy in their life. Um, I can't ask for anything more. And um, someone also asked about all the supplies I use. So I can do a little question and answer online one day, but I have a great studio that I buy all my supplies from in Markham. It's called Studio Six. Tamar is the owner and she can do or get anything for you that you want. She's amazing, she ships, and I love her, and I couldn't be here without the supplies, and I couldn't paint without the great supplies that I use. And I mix all my own colors, crazy colors. I can't even copy a color that I mixed yesterday, so that's what makes them so unique. But um, I don't know if I've covered everyone's questions, but that's a, kind of my story. Um, I'm grateful. Thank you for your patience and waiting for art. Thank you for the love that I get and thank you for 
enjoying my art and um, I hope uh, we all get through this and uh, we get together soon. Lots of love and thanks for listening. I know it's long, so I hope you enjoyed it. My life story when it comes to my art. Night, night. Bye for now.